everybody. Blessed to be in the house of God another time. Oh, we're going to ask you to bow your heads as we pray for this beautiful service on this morning. Father, we come to you with thanksgiving in our heart, O oh God, thanking you for life, health, and strength, O oh God. Father, we thank you this morning, O oh God, that you loved us enough to breathe air into the nostrils of our body. We woke up this morning, Lord God, and knew who we were. And we give you praise for protecting us all last night, O oh God, when we was not conscious of our body, nor our atmosphere, nor our area. We give you praise this morning, oh God. We ask you, Lord God, to touch mankind, oh God. Touch this region, touch this nation, touch the states, oh God. And we give you praise now in Jesus' name. We thank you for loving us so much, oh God, that you sent your only begotten son to die on the cross, that we will have life and have it more abundantly. We ask you, Lord, to forgive us for our sins, oh God, for we have fallen short of your glory. Whether the sin was physically, mentally, emotionally, or verbally, we ask you for forgiveness this morning, O oh God. Touch this service, O oh God. Allow the praise and worship to go that you, the way you want it to go, O oh God. Touch the man that's going to bring the bread of life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. This morning, we're going to go and praise and worship wherever you are. We ask you to stand on your feet or sit down and get comfortable. Well, we're going to give God the praise and worship this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Say, Lord, we praise you, Lord, we praise. You. Oh, come on, somebody, Lord, we praise you. Oh, come on. Lord, we pray you. Oh, come on. Lord, we praise. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Oh yeah, thank you, G. Say, Lord, we adore you. Lord, we adore. Come on, if you love him, come on, somebody. Lord, we adore you. Oh, come on, somebody. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we adore you, Lord. Lord, we adore. Come on, say hallelujah, hallelujah, it is the highest praise, hallelujah, come on, hallelujah, 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 now tell him, say Lord we love you, Lord we love you. Lord, Lord, we love you. Oh, we love you, Lord. Lord, we love you. Oh, come on, somebody. Lord, we love you. Say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, G. Come on, thank him for life, health, and strength. Come on. Thank you, G. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. One more time. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, he's a great God. He's a magnifying God. Come on. He 
He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. want to let you know the Jesus in you loves the Jesus in me. That makes it so easy. Hallelujah. The Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Love the Jesus in me so easy. Oh, come on, somebody. So easy. Oh, come on. So easy. Come on. Easy to love. Oh, come on. The Jesus in you, it's the Jesus in me, it's the Jesus in you, it's the so easy, so easy, oh come on, so easy, so easy, so easy, so easy, easy to love, oh come on, sing it again, come on. Jesus, the Jesus in you, loves the Jesus in me, loves the Jesus in you, loves the so easy, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. so, so easy, oh come on, so easy, so easy, easy to love. The Jesus in you loves the Jesus makes the world go easy. The Jesus in you loves them so easy. Easy, so easy. Oh, so, so easy. Oh, come on. Easy to love. in you loves the Jesus in me yeah. come on loves the Jesus so easy yeah. come on so easy come on easy to love oh come on give God some praise if the Jesus in you loves the Jesus in me, that loves the Jesus in you, that loves the Jesus in me, it makes it easy to love. Am I right about it? Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to turn the man of the service over to Reverend Willis. Let us thank God for Reverend Willis, powerful man of God. Amen, amen, amen. Why, why you, why you thinking? Let's just thank our musicians. Let's, let's thank Brother Rod. It's just, I, I, I declare. Sometimes it, it's just good to see him this morning. Amen. I, I'll be the first to say, I, Derek, I miss you, Rod. I, I, I miss you, man. It, it was something when I saw Derek pull up and Rod pull up. It, it just reminded me that they really do. Amen. They, they come on, thinking hard. Take me a look higher. Amen, somebody. Feel that. Amen, somebody. So, so I'm just, uh, how many of you this morning are just glad to be in, to be in, to be in the house? If you're glad to be in the house, you to put your hands together. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Amen. I've been in the house from day one. The coronavirus didn't stop me. Amen. I was coming. Me and Pastor was here. Sometime it was just me, him, and Deacon James or Deacon Rudy. So so we kept on. We we kept on coming. So 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 I'm familiar with being here. But but it's just something about being here on this day. Hey, amen. The first Sunday, amen, of June. Amen. Amen. Communion Sunday. Amen. It's something special 
about being in the sanctuary. I know that, that the Bible says that we are the temple of God and, and the spirit of God dwell within us. But he also said, For, forsake not yourself, the, the assembly of the believers. A amen. We ought, to, we ought to be in the house worshiping God right now. I, I, I heard on the news this morning, Pastor, I, I heard him say over 100,000 people have died as a result of the coronavirus. But guess what? You wasn't one of the ones. So that's why if you don't feel like you have a reason to give God some praise, amen. It could have been somebody, somebody could have been doing your unity right now. Somebody could have been resigning over your body. Somebody could have been putting flowers on your grave. Somebody could have been speaking final words over your body. But God, come on somebody, God gave you another chance, amen. And, and why you got another chance, amen? You ought to take advantage of that other chance. You ought, to, you ought to run like nobody's looking. You ought to dance like nobody's watching. You ought to sing like, oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be alive. I'm glad to be in the house of God. Amen. Songwriter said, could have been dead sleeping in your grave. But God made the death angel behave. Amen. He, he told him, not now. Amen. Amen. He could have said, go ahead. He said, not now. And while God has given you a not now, you ought to do something with your not now because yet you have a chance. Amen, somebody. So let's get ready. Let's get ready here in true love, praise, and worship where the love is bigger where the angel of this house, Pastor Fred Crummy, has set the atmosphere for worship and receive him as he comes. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hand together for the angel of this house. Amen. Amen. How many are ready for a word this morning? How many you know all how many how many you know all it takes is one word, Leo? All it takes is one word. So so put your hands towards the pastor and say, preach. Preach. Amen, 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 praise be unto God, amen. We are here because of the Lord Jesus Christ has woke us up this morning and started us on our way, and we are thankful to be here. How many people are thankful to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen, praise God. Listen, I just want to put a little uh, something on here today because you know what season we're in. Not only are we in a COVID season where we're dealing with trying to make sure that we keep the virus from us, but there's another virus, right? And there's a virus of racism. And I want to thank God for the Florida Baptist Association, our white, Hispanic, and Haitian, and every nationality of pastors that we've been getting together this week and uh, my pastor, uh, Richard Dunn, the second has been leading the charge in many of these cases. But we've been coming together as a people because this is not just a Black Lives Matters. This is a Black Lives Movement because I heard one of the protesters say that we will not stop until we eradicate racism everywhere. And if there's anyone that is for racism, they need to be dealt with as far as the authorities that's putting places, things that's gonna say you can't do this here, amen? And I think we all stand united that we are going to eradicate that. Not only, uh, for, you know, each of us have our own personal experiences, and I think when you see a lot of white America, uh, brown America, and our own black people come out in these marches, right? They come out because they realize that, listen, enough is enough, right? Every last one of us uh, as black Americans probably have a story that we can tell on how we were victimized. But that story got even worse for George Floyd, amen? The story got worse for Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Albrary, uh, Tamir Rice, Trevon Martin, Eric Garner, Sandra Bland, Oscar Grant, Philando Castillo, Samuel uh, DeBose, 
and Walter Scott and many more that's probably not even named because out of all of those people that I name here, there's another thousand did not have a video recorder that recorded the incident. So we, we have an obligation under God to make sure that we treat everyone uh, as our brother and as our sister. Am I right about it? Let's give God some praise today. Amen for that. And I want to uh, give a word today uh, for those of you who have your Bibles, have your electronic devices, and anything that you have that you can get the word of God, we're going to ask you to turn to 1 John uh, chapter 4. That's 1 John. That's not the gospel of John, but 1 John chapter 4. And we're going to start right at verse 1. And once we look at this powerful pericope of scripture that was not written by me, but of God, as he breathed his breath on these words for our own edification and our own belief and sanctification. Amen. First John chapter four, we're going to start right at verse one. And I see uh, some people out here that are still flipping some pages. That's okay. Just go ahead. It's toward the back of the book. Uh, First John chapter four. Uh, if you go from Revelations going back, you'll probably get a little quicker. Amen. Uh, First John chapter four, starting at verse one. All right. For those people who are in the room today, uh, if you have it, say amen. 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 If you say I need some more time, say give me just a little bit. Okay, we need a little bit more time. Okay, we got it. We got it. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. First John chapter four, starting at verse one. But before we do that, let us. Let us pray for this word today, that it may be edifying our souls, enriching our character, and refining our conduct. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your divine presence today. We thank you, Lord God, because you have shown up to True Love, Praise, and Worship Church. Not that we think that we're special, because you will show up anywhere where someone is seeking your face, oh Lord God. So, Lord God, we seek you today, Lord God. We seek the Holy Spirit that might come in and lift us up, O oh Lord God, and, and help us, O oh Lord God, to receive your word today, Lord God. Father God, we don't want to go out the same way that we came in, but we want to go out with more power. We want to go out with more of your presence, Lord God, and we want to go out loving your people, O oh Lord God. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your word today. Now, Lord God, I ask you to stand up in this, your servant, O oh Lord God, and grant unto me preaching and teaching power today, Lord God, to the end that you will be praised. I will admit before this audience of believers today that I cannot do it without you, Lord God. I cannot do it without your Holy Spirit. So, Lord God, step into me right now and use me for your edification. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen, Amen, Amen. 1 John chapter 4, starting at verse 1, you'll find these words pinned to this scripture. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Wherefore you have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God little children, and have overcome them. Because, here the word is, I'm going to land right here. Greater is he that is in you uh, than he that is in the world. Amen. Amen. Can I, can I say that one more time, saints? Greater is he that is in you than he 
that is in the world. I want to talk to you this morning, church, with this title just pinned on my spirit today. I want to talk about God versus the world. Amen. I want to talk about God versus the world. Amen. If you have known any history of the United States, that's why children, it is very important that you learn in your history classes what goes on. But if you'll learn in your history classes, it'll tell you that there are seven continents, right? And the seven continents are Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Australia, Europe, and Antarctica. So in these seven continents, uh, they were all formed by one person, and that is God. Amen? You even have the seven wonders of the world. One of those wonders is Taj Mahal. They say this is one of the things that you ought to be able to see before you leave eternity. But I came by to tell you today that none of these things matter without the creator. In Genesis, the book of Genesis, it tells us that God created the heavens and the earth. Are y'all hearing me here this morning? He, he created the heavens and the earth. And the earth, nothing was created but by him. So it doesn't matter what type of religion you may have. It doesn't matter what type of philosophy you may have. It, no, no matter what kind of science you may have, amen. Uh, uh, even the Jewish, my Jewish brothers and sisters, even my Mormons brothers and sisters, even uh, the Chinese, right, believe that God created the world, Amen. And when we say that God created the world, what we're saying is, is that, that if we go to any Bible, that's the way you're going to find it. It's not uh, some other superhuman being did these things, but God created the world. Now, if you believe that God created the world, then God is in charge of the world. Amen? All right. Because I think that sometimes we can get a little twisted because we start looking to people to tell us about what the world is. Amen. If you want to know what the world is, you ought to be listening to God. Amen. And I came by, and I'm not going to be long today, but I want to let you know, right, that, that the reason why we get so confused and, and we get off target in trying to follow God is we're too busy trying to follow people. Y'all yeah. not hearing me here today. Yeah. Whenever the, the, the worst thing that was created, and it wasn't created by God, it was created by man, and that is an opinion. Amen. Uh, uh, an opinion is one of the worst things that was ever created, amen. Uh, because then you, you got your opinion about this and opinion about that. When God created the earth, he says that, listen, I, I, I want to create man and I created woman. And he, he, let, he let Adam and Eve have a choice. Uh, uh, he let Adam and Eve have an opinion on what they would do, amen. And, and just sure enough, once you give someone opinion that's not led by God and directed by God, you can screw up a whole world. So now we have to live with sin because by sin, uh, by one man, sin, sin entered into the earth. Are y'all hearing me in here today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and here's the thing that, that I'm going to work with you a little bit on how you can avoid uh, uh, this sin nature that's coming at you. See, see, when you look at situations, when you de look at people, when you look at things that are going on in your life, right, it starts off with a person's opinion. And here's how a person's opinion is started, right? I, I, I want to tell you three ways that it is impactful to them. A, a person can have what we call tunnel vision, right? Yeah, yeah. Tunnel vision, y'all, uh, is the tendency to focus exclusively on a single or limited goal or point of view. And I came by to tell you, right, having tunnel vision can be very dangerous to you. Amen. Because what that means is, is that you only see 
a life like in a set of binoculars, right? That's why the Bible says that, that you look like in a looking glass, amen. That you can't see nothing around you, amen. You, you can't see all of the positive things around you, but you're only focused on that one bad thing. I, I, I seen a, a report card on yesterday, Sister Antonia, very, very important card, and I, I showed it to somebody, right? She had all A's, amen, and one B. And, 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 and the per person that had tunnel vision was looking at that B, amen, without realizing all of the successes and all of the, uh, uh, the top levels of the A that it produced, amen. Uh, we got to keep our mind off tunnel vision, and we got to keep our mind on God's vision, amen. Uh, we we got to look at in the holistic view. But there's another thing, right? Not only do we have tunnel vision, but we also have peripheral vision. Now, peripheral vision, y'all, is a side vision. Now, you, you, you can't focus on what's in front of you, but you, you're focusing on everything to your left and to your right. Amen. And, uh, and I tell you what, uh, uh, one of the most dangerous, powerful, uh, uh, largest beasts on the earth is a rhinoceros. Amen. But even the rhinoceros is smart enough to know that even though because he has eyes on the side of him, he, he does not have eyes in the front of him, right? Uh, uh, he has only peripheral vision, amen. But the rhinoceros is smart because what he would do to attack his enemy in the front is he would turn his head and take a picture of his enemy, amen. And when he turns back around, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't charge from what he's seeing on the side of him. He's charging from the picture that he's seeing in front of him, amen. So I, I want to tell you about people with peripheral vision. You better know how to take a picture of what God is telling you to do, what God is asking you to do, what God is directing you to do. And when anybody tries to distract you from your left or distract you from your right, you ought to let your frontal vision, that picture you have of what God told you, to lead you <coughs> amen but not only do you have tunnel vision not only do you have peripheral vision but there's some people who have worldly vision my god worldly vision y'all is of are relating to or devoted to this world amen and and it pursuits rather than to religion or spiritual affairs it, it's not interested in what god says it's it's not interested in what the spirit says but what it's interested in is what man said oh my god this is not good for some people amen uh, i came by to tell you today you can't live by worldly vision amen you got to know that the vision that you need to be focused on is the one that Habakkuk 2 and 2 tells us that God says that he will write the vision and make it plain. Amen? Amen. We got to follow God's word in everywhere we go. We got to follow God's word in everything we do. We can't just be focused with what's in front of us. We can't just be focused on what's on the side of us. We can't just be focused on what people say, but we got to be focused on every word that produced out of the word of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I want you to understand that Romans chapter 12, verse 2, put it best. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, and be not conformed to this world. Amen. Uh, 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 don't be conformed to this world. And, and when they're talking about this world, the people that make up this world, but it says, but be ye conformed by the what? By, by the transforming of your mind. Amen. You, you should be able to transform your mind to realize that you didn't get anything that you got unless God blessed you. Amen. You, you got to be able to understand that you couldn't have got where you are today if it wasn't for God. <laughs> You know what? When we get old in life, that's why young children don't understand because they ain't been through enough. Amen. Uh, but once you get older and realize that when you had that sickness that, that might have been unto death, God stepped in. And he said that I was bruised for your, your iniquities. And he says the chastisement of our people is upon you. And by my stripes, 
you're already healed, amen. You, you got to understand that when you are about to get evicted, amen. When You got to understand when you lost your job or you lost that relationship, amen. You couldn't depend on man anymore. You had to depend on God, amen. Uh, God just birthed the word inside of you and just said, I'd never leave you nor forsake you, amen. Uh, how many people know that it was a word of God that sustained you when man turned his back on you? And the Bible says that, he says, before I formed thee in thy belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the proverb. So, so I came by to tell you today that God already has ordained your life. Amen. All we have to do is follow the script. Amen. I'm going to give you my first point today. If you want to be able to stay out of the world's view and to stay in God's view, here's the first thing that you got to do. You got to be able to know that he is in you. Amen. And, and so I ask you the question, is God in you? Amen. Uh, you, you should be able to tell if God is in you. Amen. If you don't feel a moving of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If, if you don't feel like when you don't want to go anymore that something inside of you saying listen push on and, and keep going and you can make it. Amen. Uh, if you hear somebody telling you that you're defeated you know that that's not of God. Amen. But, but God is telling you that I did not bring you this far to leave you. Amen. You, you sometimes got to realize that I I don't want to do this but God is saying listen here I'm charging you to get it done because I know what you can do I believe in you amen and I set you on a course amen sometimes you got to know that God is in you amen I, I want you to ask somebody the question who is not a believer in God and they say listen I know God he say if you know God where does he live amen uh, if they tell you he live in heaven they don't know God amen uh, because God lives in you amen uh, God lives in you and so that's why when you need something from God you ought to have something to regurgitate from God amen I, I tell God all the time listen God this is your word amen I, this is what you said oh God I'm, I'm not asking you for something that I said but, but I want to bring up your word amen and you can regurgitate it in a time of need so you, the first thing you got to know is is he in you amen but the second thing you got to know is, can he see you? You know, I think some people don't believe God see them. <laughs> yeah, that's why they do all the dirt they do. Amen. Because they figure God can't see me. Amen. There ain't no way you can hide from God. Amen. Because he's omnipresent. Amen. He's everywhere. Amen. And then John chapter 10, verse 27, 28, he says, listen, and, and whether you know it or not, he says, my sheep hear my voice. Yeah, and I know them. That's what the word of God says. So if you've claimed God as your Lord and Savior, amen, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you better know that God can see you. Amen. Are you hearing me here today? Not only that, it says, and they follow me. He says, listen, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they what? Follow me. So the question is, are you following God? Are you following God? Yeah, yeah. We, we got to realize that we must follow God or we want God to follow us. Yeah. You want God to find us on that road where somebody done left us for dead. Amen. God says, listen, I can't follow you unless you follow me. Amen. Because we need to be led by God, not led by the world. Amen. This, this is God against the world. You, you have a choice to choose between God I choose the world. Amen. Uh, yeah. But, but you ought to be able to say like the old songwriters to say, he said, listen, this joy that I have. Amen. Uh, are y'all hearing me today? This, this joy. Amen. So, so you know that when you get depressed, when you know when you get distracted and you can find joy in the midst of your pain, you can sing that song. This, 
joy that I have. Uh, it, the world didn't give it to me. Amen. Uh, you got to know that you confess by your mouth who gave you that joy. Amen. You should have been weeping over there. You should have been playing the role of the victim, but you stepping up and saying, despite whatever happened, I believe God. Amen. Uh, I believe that he's a way maker. I believe that he'll wake, make a way out of no way. Amen. Uh, you got to be able to know. He says, who follow me? And he says, I'll give to them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That's why I don't worry about my enemy. Amen. Because, see, when my enemy come to try to get me, they ain't going to do nothing but run into my God. Amen. Because that's when I'm going to be going in like Paul says, I wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. I'm, I'm going to come right in and let them know I bind you up in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm, I'm not going to fight you with my hands, but I'm going to fight you with the spirit of God. Because with the spirit of God, I don't have to exert any energy. All I got to do is confess that you are my God and you can handle it. Amen. I, I bind you up and God says, when you start doing some binding, I'll start doing some loosing. Amen. And, and break you free. But you can't do that unless God can see you and God sees you when you follow him. Amen. And the third thing is that uh, you need to first find out is, is he in you and you need the second thing you need to find out can he see you but the third thing you need to find out is would he want to be you Lord have oh mighty quiet in here today Lord have mercy Jesus let me say that one more time the first thing is 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 he in you amen the second thing is is can he see you but the third thing is your report card is, would he want to be you? Lord, have mercy, Jesus, man. Some, some, somebody saying, hold up, wait a minute. Preacher, time out, time out. <laughs> yeah, I, I still got a little ways to go, amen. I, I don't think God want to come in right now. <laughs> but the Bible says in Romans 8 and 28, they say, and we know all things work together for good, amen. But what I like about that scripture is he says that we were all created to be like him. So we're not saying, and God realizes that we're not like him now, but you were created to be like him, and you ought to be on your way to look like Jesus, amen. You ought to be on your way to say, listen, I'm shaping off some things. Listen, I I'm a preacher, right? But it took me some years to get some of the stuff off me that have been on me all this life. Right? I had to shape off this one day, and I had to shape off that one day, and I had to shape off this one day. There's a lot of things that I, my wife can testify about. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you got to shape off some stuff to be conformed, and then you'll realize God will give you another chance. Amen. See, we got to realize that we serve God and not the world. Can I say that one more time? We serve God and not the world. In Psalm 24 and 1, it said it best. He says that the earth is the Lord's, amen, and the fullness thereof, amen. The world and they that dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. <coughs> So I want you to understand when I tell you that it's God versus the world, I want you to understand something. That word verse right there it is not mentioned that God should be able to compare, compete, or comply with the world. Amen. It's, it, that, that word verse doesn't mean that, that it's some kind of competition between God and the world because God, he made the world. Amen. But the exposition of the text is so that every living civilized creature has the ability to choose between God and the world. Are y'all hearing me? That every living creature, you have a choice. Your children have a choice. Your parents have a choice, amen, to choose between God and the world. And the Bible says, and I told you earlier, be not conformed to this world, amen, but to the renewing of your mind that you may be proven what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. And as I get ready to close, I want to let you know God says that, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. That's how he's saying I know you. He says that the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He says, for the wisdom 
of this world is foolishness with God. I want you to understand that any of you all are trying to make the world make you, you're making a mistake. Because he say that's the foolishness to God. For it is written that he taketh the wise into their own craftiness. Amen. He says that you need to know that you are the temple of God. Uh huh. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. So I say to you today, let a man so examine himself. Amen. Get ready. Get ready. Because God is getting ready to do a new thing. That's why you see the COVID virus moving, amen. Uh, that's why you see the black movement going through, because God is getting ready to do a new thing, amen. And he says that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, uh, neither has it entered <coughs> into the hearts of men. So when, when I gave you the scripture and I said to you that it says that a uh, 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 greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. So I stopped by to ask you today at church, who is greater? Amen. I, I came by to ask you, who is greater? Amen. Is the situation what you're going through greater? Who is greater? Amen. Is the pain in your body greater? Amen. I came by to ask you, who is greater? Amen. That person that left you in that no good relationship I ask you who is greater amen if that situation is greater or is God greater in your life amen uh, when you're having sleepless nights uh, I want you to wake up and know who is greater amen it's got to be our Lord Jesus Christ amen because no matter what you go through amen I I heard somebody say that the Lord is my light because they know who is greater, amen. I, I heard somebody say that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil because I know who's greater, amen. I, I came by and said, but I will bless the Lord at all times uh, because I know who's greater. And you can plug your own testimony in there, amen. Uh, when I was out on drugs, amen, and nobody came and came a morsel of bread. Who is greater? Who came out to get me? Amen. Uh, when I was lost and all alone, uh, I had to find out who was greater. Amen. And I came by to tell you that the Jesus that was hung high and laid low. Amen. And, and made to go into the grave. He got up with all power because who is greater? Amen. It's God versus the world. But I came by today to tell you who I choose. I choose God. Amen. I, I don't know about you, but I choose God. Amen. I, I don't care what I'm going through, but I choose God. Amen. I, I don't care how I feel. I choose God. Who? Who is greater? It's God versus the world. Who you going to choose? Who, who, who's going to be your God? Your car? Your house, your man, your woman, or God? Who is greater? So when it comes down to you saying, listen, man, should I go to church today? Say, who is greater? Somebody trying to stop you say, child, don't, don't go to church today. We can go to Denny's. Who is greater? Huh? When, when, when you're trying to get your life together and you're trying to read your Bible and somebody else wants you to do something else, ask them who's greater. Yeah. We got to be able to choose God. If we choose God, we can erase racism in this world today. If we realize who's greater, is, is it the way that I feel about somebody else or the way that I feel about God? Yes, yes. That, that's who it is. Doesn't matter what people say. Get rid of your tunnel vision. Get rid of your peripheral vision. And greater than that, get rid of your world vision. And decide in your life who's going to be greater to you. Your life in the world or your God of the world. Amen. We're going to ask you today those of you who are making a transition in your life, 
And that's what it is. I, I had to make a transition. I knew God. I thought I knew God. Yeah, I thought I knew God. I, I knew how to go to church and go around the, the table and pick up the communion tray and all of that. I know how to play the movements of the church, but I didn't know God. I didn't know God for myself, so I had to go through a transition. First of all, I had to accept the fact that this has got to be my chosen way of life. And I'm telling you right now, I don't want to brag, I don't want to boast, but my life has been so much greater when I chose God over the world. Amen. We were in here talking yesterday, and I thank the food distribution crew for your great work. We gave out about 170 meals on yesterday, and we were talking, right? <laughs> and we started talking about all of these Miami stars that's around, the Trick Daddies and, and the Lukes and the, all of the ones around. I said, man, I know, I know of all those folks out in been in the same room with them, out in conversating with them, and not one of them is greater than God. Not one of them put food on my table. Not one of them healed my body. Not one of them made me a better husband and a better father. Amen. So I came to tell you, you can have your favorites, but show the greater one to be in God. So if you choose God today and you want to turn your life around and you want to place your feet on solid ground, I'm going to ask you today to comment, to like, and to share what you heard in this message that helped you. And if you want to be saved, you can also, don't be ashamed of whoever's there in Facebook land and on YouTube. Say, Pastor Fred, and that's what I want to be known from from now on. Pastor Fred, that's it. That's just it, just Pastor Fred. Say, Pastor Fred, I want to change my life. I want to do something that's constructive. I want to get what God has for me. He says he knew me from the foundation of this earth, from the hairs that was on my head, from being in my mother's womb, he knew me. So I want to have everything that he has for me. So I'm going to ask you to do like I did. You don't have to make a 180 degree turn. Just turn 25, 35, 45 degrees at a time. Until you get to the point where you are where you want to be and need to be. Choose God or choose the world. I like all of the members of True Love Praise and Worship Church who are still worshiping at home and not here today. And I thank God for those of you who came back today. We are easing in. I'm going to ask you, if you're out there, True Love, go ahead and comment, like, and share right now. Let me know you're out there. Let me know that you are interested in what God has to say. God is using me in a mighty way. He's given me the vision to bring the word for. This is not my word. And I thank God every time he gives it to me and uses me to direct somebody here because there's somebody that needs this now. There's somebody that needs this word right now. And if you're all good, that's fine. Thank you. That means that you've been growing a lot. But you have the opportunity to share with somebody else like somebody deposited in you. Because we want to see everyone be blessed. Amen? It's not any selfish Christians. So let me lead you to Christ today, those of you who want to do it in your heart. And you can do it right where you are in the privacy of your own home. I want you to just repeat after me today, God, I'm sorry for my sins come into my life and save me right now I know Lord God that I've done some wrong still doing some wrong but Lord God create in me a new creature that I may follow you love you and learn from you all the days of my life thank you Lord for coming into my life. Thank you, Lord, for 
blessing me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we believe that if you've heard that prayer and you prayed that prayer, we believe that you're on your journey to greatness. And you know who's greater, that God is greater than anything that you could possibly go on in your life. Only thing that people can give you is worthless promises. Amen. But God can give you assurance of eternal life. Amen. Amen. All right. We're getting ready to uh, have the communion table brought in. But we want to let you know that this is a ministry that is getting, especially online, very expensive. Because extensive ministry is expensive ministry. I'm going to ask you today that if you have not given to this church, that God will convict your heart and allow you to give and be a blessing because we utilize 100% of the finances in this church for ministry, not for payroll, not for payment of a preacher, but for ministry. So let this ministry that blesses other people, let it be able to be a blessing to you to be able to give. Our cash app sign, we always know it starts with the dollar sign, but it's True Love Church Miami. Very easy to remember. Our cash app sign is True Love Church Miami. And you have to say Miami because there's some other True Love Churches out there. Bless them. But True Love Church Miami... We want you to give and let the Lord bless you in your giving. And be a cheerful giver. Don't let it hurt you. It's going to bless you. Amen. And for those, we'll be checking the screen as soon as we're off air to pray for those who need special prayer. So if you need special prayer and you want to go ahead and type that in on a comment that you need special prayer, you can do that at this time yes so if you need special prayer we're going to pray for you and all that you're going through we're going to get ready for our communion service today the first thing that we're going to do in our communion service is we're going to bless these elements has given to us that he shared with his own disciples at the last supper. Let us pray for these elements. Father God, we thank you today, Lord God, for the elements that we're about to receive, O oh Lord God. We do this, O oh Lord God, in remembrance of you. Bless the bread, bless the wine, O oh Lord God, but not only that, bless the people that partake in your son. And Lord God, continue to open up the windows of heaven for them, open up doors that have never been opened in their lives. Lord God, we do this in remembrance of you, Lord God. So Father God, we bless you today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to ask uh, those of you to come around the table. We're going to start around this way by the pole and come this way. And you'll pick up both elements as you come. It's going to be right in the tray. I'm not going to hold it up. Just come around and pick up the elements. Come around this way. Come around. Amen. Amen. We also are going to have communion in the parking lot for those uh, members who are not here right now and will come at 11 o'clock to pick up the elements and just keep going, keep going. Just keep, keep. Yeah, we will have the community in the parking lot today for those who are keeping their good social distance. We have social distance in here today. Thank God we have Brother Terrell is out there wiping down the doors every time somebody come in. We are praying that we're doing the right things by God, uh, that he'll continue to bless us. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 
It is such a blessing and a joy to be able to come back in the house and start back off with our communion service and live. Amen. So in your places, please remain on your uh, feet standing up. We're going to ask you today to take the bread. The, this is the bread. On the night before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was betrayed, he gathered together with his disciples. And he said for the bread, he says, this is my body, which has been broken. He says, and often as you should meet, take and eat in remembrance of me. And they blessed it and they broke it. And then they ate the bread. In like manner, he said, this is the cup which has been shed for the remission of sin. This is the blood of the New Testament. He said, in like manner, take and drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. You may drink. Then he said to his disciples, he says, by eating my body and drinking my blood, you do show forth my death and my suffering till I come again. And then they went out into the Mount of Olives and they were singing and they were rejoicing and they were praising God together. At True Love Praise and Worship Church, we too, once we call for the benediction, we ask you to go out praising and worshiping and loving God together. Amen. Amen. This concludes our communion service. And we're going to ask uh, Reverend Willis if he would come up and uh, give us the benediction. We'll take an offering from those of you who are inside of the sanctuary today. For those of you who are not in the sanctuary, we'll take your offering by Cash App, True Love Church, Miami. As soon as, as, soon as the uh, uh, offering has been taken, we will go ahead and uh, give the benediction. And we're going to have our very own Reverend Daryl Willis come up and give us the benediction. Amen. Before we do our benediction, let's just give God a great big hand clap of praise for being back in the house. Amen. Let's also give the angel of this house, uh, Pastor Pastor Fred. He said for now on, he want to be known as Pastor Fred. So let's let's put your hand up for Pastor Fred. Amen. That God has gave him a vision. Uh, he's always had a vision, but that God has made it bigger. Amen. Let, let us stand for our benediction. Amen. Now, may the grace of God and the sweet commune of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with these thou people henceforth and evermore. Before you leave, tell, tell somebody something good. Amen. Amen.